A couple of weeks ago, I told my guys, hey, I want to drive the new FJ. Well, it seems they misunderstood what I meant because what they gave me was the Fuso FJ wing van. The first thing you'll notice about the Fuso is the fact that there's no Mitsubishi logo in front, unlike the Cantor we reviewed a few weeks ago. And that's because this one is now made by Daimler, uh, which actually bodes well for the local company that handles Fuso, which is now Sojits, who also separated from Mitsubishi in the last couple of years. Now, the vehicle you're looking at is the FJ wing van version. As you can tell, uh, this one comes with a 32-foot uh, body in the back. It's made by Fruhoff and it measures in 32 feet long, 8 feet wide, and 8 feet tall, which is perfect for a lot of, well, pretty big businesses, especially if you're in the shipping industry. The big thing about uh, this wing van is, well, the wing van body. And it's actually pretty easy to open. First, you start by opening this control box, right? Twist the key to the right, make sure it's switched on. And then you have to unlatch those two. So let's open it. Come on, guys. Ready? There you go. That's one, two, and three. So once you unclip those three uh, latches, you can now open the body. Right. So this is the wing van configuration. So as I said before, the body measures 32 feet long, uh, 8 feet wide, and 8 feet high. And that makes for a carrying capacity, well, in terms of uh, weight, this can carry 15,500 kilograms or 15.5 metric tons. So we're now inside uh, the Fuso FJ. And actually, surprisingly, getting up here to this height, because you're, you're sitting way up off the ground, uh, getting up to this height isn't so bad because they have two steps here and then they've got two grab handles so you can, you know, really pull yourself up like a ladder or, you know, like, like you were using a ladder. Uh, inside, of course, it's a lot, um, it's not as basic as I thought it would be. Um, there are quite a few switches um, all around the cabin and there are some blank ones if you want to add you know features uh, depending on the use of the vehicle like um, the configuration of this which is the tipper meaning the one with the the, the big uh, truck like bed in the back that goes like that uh, you can you know you'll activate the switch here which this one doesn't have um, you do have power windows you have AC you have well cruise control which is quite surprising uh, but yeah, if you're stepping up from a vehicle or a pickup truck or anything much smaller, there's quite a bit of a uh, learning curve uh, when it comes to, you know, stepping inside uh, Fuso FJ. The first thing you'll notice is that everything is pretty much super sized, especially the steering wheel, uh, the stocks for the wiper. Your light controls are here, very, uh, very European actually, which makes sense because Daimler now makes these. Actually, if you look around the cabin, 
you can notice a few touches that are a bit Mercedes-Benz. Like for example, the wipers. They have a Mercedes-Benz uh, triple star there. Uh, in a big heavy truck like this, a lot of the functions actually run on air pressure. Uh, for example, if you want to adjust the steering wheel, you press here, right there, and then you lock it in place. Hear that? Air pressure. The seat is actually uh, an air suspended seat. So it's very, actually going to be quite comfortable because suspensions of these are not going to be comfortable. Uh, only the driver has the, 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 air, the air suspended seat. So the guys on the right, well, all they have are foot rests and whatnot. So, you know, sorry. Um, the handbrake or the parking brake is also air operated because the, the braking system of this is primarily air. Uh, and it, they use air, air brakes because hydraulics can't quite keep up or have a hard time dealing with the pressures and the heat generated by a braking system of a truck this big and potentially this heavy, especially when it's loaded. That's why when you drive up against a really big truck, you hear, you know, pss, pss, all the time because of the brakes, the clutch, and everything else. Oh, also the clutch. This one has a high and low range. So you have, it's a nine-speed gearbox, so you have reverse, and then you have, uh, I guess, gear zero would be crawl, and then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, one to four is the low range, which is just to, you know, get you going. Uh, but the real gears that you're gonna use are five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, to activate the high range, because right now it's in the, the low range, you know, it's pointed in that default setting, to access the high range, you have to give it a, a fist bump kind of thing. Hear the air? That's that's it, meaning it, it's now pointing towards uh, 5, 6, 7, and 8. But for now, let's drive it around, back to low range. Uh, let's take this thing out for a drive. Uh, consider this a bucket list item. Okay, so handbrake off. Lights are off there. Good. Says we're in neutral. Clutch is also air. Let's go. We're in first gear. That's a big, that's a really big steering wheel. My, up. All right. Being a big heavy truck uh, means mm -hmm, the the rev range is not very long. I mean, max power develops at 2,200 RPM. Uh, but really, you, you want to keep it around 1,000 to around maybe 1.8 maximum. So, let's take it out. Okay, as you can see, oh, fourth gear. There we go. All right. <laughs> Sorry, we're learning this as we go a little bit. Uh, but surprisingly, driving it around now, you know it's big, but it doesn't feel that big. You just have to adjust to it a little bit. So um, if, of course, most of the guys you would, who would be watching this probably won't be the ones doing the driving. So you have to you know, train your guys or get someone who, who knows uh, how to really drive trucks. And it's properly licensed to drive a truck like this. So which is why we can't take it out on public roads because I'm not properly licensed for this one, but we can drive it around here on a closed course. So the turning radius, um, well, for most uh, pickup trucks, many of us are used to turning radius around, you know, maybe five meters, six meters, that kind of thing. The turning radius for this is 23. 23 meters for a vehicle of this size. Uh, that's, that's pretty wide, but again, that's really how it's supposed to be. Which is why, if you're driving next to a truck, you really need to give them a wide berth. Uh, because, you know, vis visibility can be quite limited. Uh, if you look here, there are actually multiple, um, there are, how many, six side mirrors. Uh, there's one here on the side, the main one, which, you know, shows the, the lane to my left. Uh, one showing below, just in case some, you know, a motorcycle tries to get in there. Hopefully not, that's a very dangerous thing to do. Same with the other side, and it also has one in the front, so you can kind of keep track of where the hood is, or, you know, how you're positioning your vehicle. It feels powerful when you drive it. You, you, you feel like you're really in charge. I mean. Not only from the fact that, you know, you're, you've got a commanding view of the road, but, well, when it comes to braking performance, let's try it. You know, I mean, it really can... Wow, this thing... Okay, this thing really stops. So being a nine-speed a nine manual, it can be a bit confusing uh, if you're not used to it. Now, me, I'm still, I'm still trying to get to grips with, with this kind of gearbox, but 
it's actually a lot easier to use than I thought it would be. Um, even when compared to the larger, uh, to the smaller um, canter that we drove earlier, that one had a really rough gearbox. You know, I was really pushing it in, uh, and it's biting and it's you know it's binding and everything like that. Uh, this one actually there's not a lot of binding. Um, you just shift. It's fairly smooth for a vehicle of this size. That was not what I expected. I expected more of the same. But uh, Fuso really did a good job building it because it feels pretty solid. And to think, in the, inside the cabin, there's not a lot of rattling going on. Actually, there's no rattling going on. The only real rattling is in the back. But you know, in 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 a vehicle like this, you expect to be to be a lot of noise. You know, and the engine. Um, oh, back to low range. Fourth gear. Back to low range. It's not too bad. Here's where it gets. A bit, uh, a bit more challenging, right? Um, if you want to, let's say, do a three-point turn. In a truck like this, it's not as easy, but I think we can do it. So let's clutch in, put it to reverse. Reverse, okay. All right, so the mirrors actually do a pretty good job of, uh, you know, pretty much covering the major, um, the major portions of the vehicle. Uh, one thing I would have liked is maybe a rear view camera of some kind. Uh, because that would just make it, you know, a lot safer. So here I'm just estimating which way to go. Uh, uh. This steering wheel really is massive. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cheat a little bit and call that a three-point turn because we've got the space here anyway. Right, so second gear. Let's see if you can take off. Oh, yeah, there you go. I need longer arms to be able to use uh, this steering wheel. I'm actually enjoying myself a lot more than you would think because, you know, as a, as a kid, many of us want to drive really big vehicles, really, you know, real trucks. And this one's a pretty convenient one. All in all, it's good fun. Of course, we're doing it for fun. We're giving you all the pertinent information of this vehicle. But for some, it's going to be a lot, you know, it's, it's going to be some serious work. But frankly, for a, for a truck of this size, I expected it to be harder. You know, I expected it to be... Um, more difficult to drive, um, you know, more of a handful. And well, it, it is a handful, but what I like about what Fuso did with this one is they didn't make it too much of a handful. They tried to find, you know, they found little ways to make it, you know, easier. So your guys can focus on deliveries. <laughs> well, shifting, I still need to work on that. You guys, you know, can focus on deliveries rather than, you know, having a hard time driving it. And I will need more practice, but overall, yeah, they, they really delivered on this vehicle, meant for deliveries. So that about does it uh, for our time with the new Fuso FJ 2528R, the 32-footer version. Uh, in its uh, basic configuration of cabin chassis, you can get this truck for 3.525 million. But once you add the through half body by Centro, it adds another 1.7 million to that price tag. But we think it's well worth it because, as you can see, it's a very versatile truck. You can load on either side and the wing van configuration makes it quite a bit of a space saver. Uh, now, uh, in, this, in this final configuration, it really is perfect if your company is involved in deliveries and logistics. And if you're in that business, well, it really means that you have something that's very reliable and very presentable and very useful. This is Vince of Auto Industria. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe uh, our YouTube channel and this video. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on Twitter.